Hello and welcome to our next session of Media Law, Ethics and Literacy. The course code is GMC351. It's our lecture number 18, which is Evolution of Media. Where is it all going? So welcome to the session. I am Parvez Khan. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Kohat University of Science and Technology. So before we start our session, we'll talk about the objectives of the session first. Students will be able to understand the evolution of technology and its impact. They will be able to understand how technology shapes media content and audiences. They will be able to understand that communication mediums evolve over a period of time. And that evolution brings new challenges and ethical considerations. So we'll be talking about ethical considerations towards the end, how this evolution of media has, an, has its impact on journalism in specific and uh, what kind of consequences are there, what kind of ethical considerations are there. So we'll be talking about that as well. So let's talk about what is an evolution. Well, evolution, we can call it a gradual process of change and development according to the Cambridge Dictionary. So it's important to look at evolution in this context because it's gradual process of change and development and when we talk about communication evolution it's basically the mediums that have changed over the period of time. The last four five hundred years we've seen some dynamic changes and it all depends on new technologies, new inventions, how they shaped our communication world today. It all depends on evolution of media as well. So obviously there's a famous term that medium is the message that's also you can look into that context as well so no matter what medium you're using it has its impact it has its own implications and we are going to look into that. So we are going to look at the eras first what kind of eras were there where there was pre-industrial age that we normally see then well, obviously more recently three four hundred years ago uh, there was a rise in industrial age and now I'll uh, just that's four five decades ago we witnessed electronic age or you can say the last 20th century was in fact electronic age and now these days it's new information age and I would say these days neo new information age because we have stepped into modern digital world as well these days so looking into this picture you can see that these are some the first picture above is the cave uh, the, the drawings from the cave painting so you can see that how uh, the, the people used to elaborate messages or draw some arts in the caves and that was also a kind of communication that used to take place. So what the early communications were cave paintings, paper writing, drawn maps, you know, five and smokes and even drum beats used to communicate, were used as communication mediums. Uh, but I will specifically discuss the modern evolution, we, we, that's big history to how Chinese used papers or how uh, fire or smokes or drum beats were used by different conquerors but I'll move towards the printing press because this is what defines our communication era this is the time where the, the press uh, eventually evolved and journalism and how the coverage is started because at mass level the printing press is the key word because it's the starting point where mass publication started before that, individual writers would write books, they would be copied by others. Uh, no two books would be alike or something like that, it would be an issue. But printing press changed everything. The exact same text would be published. I mean, this technology, uh, this, this was also done by wooden blocks in China previously and uh, even other countries, in European countries, the wooden blocks were used or some other methods were used. But printing press was fast and it was like for mass audiences. So let's look into it that just a couple of centuries before the industrial age development started to take place regarding publications and printing press is instrumental when we talk about the evolution of media or evolution of mediums or that how uh, the, the concept of mass publications, mass communications and all these came. So the starting point, uh, that's why we are bringing it straight from printing press because that's a turning point in history uh, where it all started. and. It all the credit goes to Johannes Gutenberg, who is a German goldsmith and an inventor who invented the printing press in the mid 15th century, around 1440 and between the 1440 and 15, 1450. 
that was a turning point in history that gave birth to mass production to printing material. That was starting point and initially printing press was used to publish Bibles and religious texts but later on this printing press was used for newspaper that's how the concept of a monthly newspaper initially came on and then it came bi-weekly and fortnightly and that's the concept started from printing press and before this it was not easy to print two books alike but uh, Gutenberg's invention helped usher massive cultural movement like the European Renaissance and the Protestant Reformation. It's important to talk about these two key words, European Renaissance and Protestant Reformation, the role of printing press because you would publish text at mass level, it would reach a wider audiences and that's when Protestant Reformation also took place like Martin, Martin Luther, uh, this a Protestant movement uh, which just founded the movement and he used uh, the printed text uh, that, that was very helpful in the Protestant Reformation. So initially, as I said, that it was very helpful for, for religious uh, spreading out the religious text. But later on, journalism and the newspaper or and the spread of news and even advertisement, they utilized printing press to a greater, greater advantage later on. And then after nearly three, four hundred years and uh, the German printer Friedrich uh, Koenig pushed media production even further when he essentially hooked the steam engine up to a printing press he attached it and that was the beginning of industrialization of printed media that's when the speedy uh, publication started multiple and speed that was the basically turning point when the steam engine was attached to the printing press so that also revolutionized media and the concept of weekly and daily newspapers later on became a reality so this is important to know that between 1440 to 1810, the period of three, 400 years, printing press was evolving to the point it came to steam engine and then obviously later on other modern technology, but printing press was evolving. But these three, 400 years was a quiet time. It was finally when we reached the industrial age, this was the turning point after which everything started to change. And this is why it's important to talk about another a very important invention uh, which was uh, developed in 1830s, the telegraph. It was developed in 1830s and 1840s by Samuel Morse and uh, the other inventors. They also worked on it. Multiple people were involved, but basically it revolutionized the long distance communication. And it worked by transmitting electrical signals over a wire laid between stations. So basically this technology was a wire technology you had to spread out the wire from one place to another in order to communicate. So, for example, if you're sending a message from Peshawar to Kohat, you need to lay down a wire from Peshawar to Kohat or to uh, some other station. That's how it initially worked through codes. And it would uh, take a small message and it will just go through Morse codes and reach there. So, widespread and successful use of device required a unified system of telegraph stations among which the information could be transmitted. And basically what we can say that these electric telegraph transformed how wars were fought and won and how journalists and newspaper conducted their businesses. From journalistic point of view, in a, particularly uh, during the American Civil War uh, between the 1861 and 1863, that in, in that uh, duration of time, it gave birth to the concept of lead. Journalists could only send in important information through telegraph, so they would short, they would send in very short paragraphs, and that would, that would create what we call lead today. That's the first opening paragraph or the sentence, and that's how the concept of lead started during the, uh, what we call the, the civil war period. So, so technology shaped journalism. I mean. You no longer could send long text. You could only send a specific amount of text because of the Morse code uh, limitations. And that gave birth to a very particular style of uh, journalism. For example, when we talk about uh, a small lead that is like three people were killed, four injured, when a bus collided with each other, this is the kind of lead that you used to give. Or in the civil wars, 13 people were killed and 14 injured when the rebels attacked the forces uh, three people were taken to hospitals and they are critically injured something like this is how 
it all started very specific very particular information so that credit all goes to technology because first the newspaper shaped it and now it's telegraph and rather than taking weeks to be delivered by horse and carriage mail carts piece of news could be exchanged between telegraph stations almost instantaneously instantly it became faster it could reach uh, within just few moments and that's the speed so it it evolved journalism it evolved communication patterns uh, technology did it so in the end i can say that telegraph had a profound economic effect allowing money to be wired across great distances and it changed the way economics it changed the way the war was dealt it changed the way how journalism took place so to summarize all this we can say that yes after newspaper telegraph changed the way audiences were perceiving news audiences were getting information it also changed the way economics were done it also changed the speed and everything but more importantly it also changed the way how war were treated how war was explained how war was fought and won so it really had the technology is having a serious impact on our lives and telegraph did that for a while but it was short lived it was not for a long period of time because telegraph had its limitations it could not be spread out for a long period of time it was expensive the wire could not be spread across different places so to cut short i would say that telegraph did work miracles for a while but it was short lived so what was the need after this what do you think i think the need the important need was wireless technology why because telegraph required wire to to make its message reach far across but wireless technology is something that has revolutionized our modern world today for example let's talk about in 20th century broadcast radio astonished and delighted public by providing news and entertainment with an immediacy never before thought possible obviously it is a pretty simple sentence that explains that no one could thought that a person speaking on a microphone of a radio would reach you instantly while you're sitting at your home office or anywhere in your cars that was unbelievable no one could have imagined that and it changed and that's why from 1920 to 1945 radio developed into the first electronic mass medium monopolizing the airways it, it created a monopoly it was a such a strong medium everyone was having a radio set everyone was listening to news and particularly this era because two world wars were fought with for first one from 1914 to 1919 and the other one obviously later on uh, so the two world wars particularly the importance of radio was there and that's why the period from 1920 to 1945 is critical because uh, it monopolized the airways it had a crucial role in the world wars the the concept of live coverage during the world war also changed the way the news coverage was done before no one imagined that journalism would come to a point where you'll be standing at a place and you'll be explaining the wars but radio did that that's the evolution of media and secondly radio was also a very powerful propaganda medium so it was effectively used and from you can say that the 20 30 years it just ruled for a maximum period of time it just monopolized the airways and then we have a big name of edward r murrow who brought world war into the living rooms of american homes rarely had people heard the sounds of actual war unless they had fought in one themselves and they would hear the shootings along with murrow's outstanding reporting it was something new and exciting it established radio's place as a legitimate source of journalism so radio became a legitimate source of journalism and it was wireless technology that made it all possible and if you are interested to look into how uh, the early journalism was particularly after uh, the radio the television the early television so i would recommend a film called good night and good luck it's about edward r murrow obviously we just spoke about him it's a big name when it comes to live coverage in world wars so good night and good luck is a very good recommended film where you can see how early broadcasts were done now evolution of media is a constant process so after wireless uh, there was a need for another medium you you could listen but the need for visuals came and that's why television came in handy 
the audio with visual medium, the television came into existence. And what we can say is again, 20th century was dominated by non-print mediums such as radio, television and films. And large scale film studios began producing silent films in Europe and America in the early part of the 20th century. Then the film industry developed later when sound became a necessary part of films. Sound was a very important point because it had a stronger impact. So you can see when sound was introduced, it also changed the way people used to look at cinema. So parallel to radio, television, the television sets began to replace older forms of communication mediums. And initially it was all black and white. So television, basically we can say it started on uh, around 1930s, but its dominant time period in, in actually started in 1950s. Till then, radio was a popular medium and color television brought life to the televised content. On 25th June 1951, CBS broadcast the very first commercial color television program. And live television through satellite further enhanced the mass media culture. And later on, the cable television, the satellite news, the BBC and the CNNs going live across continents, sharing live coverages. That was remarkable. Live coverage changed the way we look at things. Now, for example, we are sitting in, in our homes and we are watching a live cricket match. No one could have imagined that 100 years ago. It's really a remarkable achievement. Satellites changed that. Live coverage, instant coverage. But it also brought journalistic challenges with itself. It's a serious business because when you're going live, uh, you're prone to mistakes. You can do kind of coverage that can be harmful. There's little margin for gatekeeping. Why am I saying this? Because uh, in, in the print media, there are editors, there are magazine editors, there are chief editors. They're looking into each and every content before publication and it goes out the next day. But in television live coverages, it's very difficult to, to cut the content. You have to be very specific. A slip of tongue can be problematic. And that's why we always see bloopers and mistakes and all these kind of things. But still, Television editing was still manageable because director news or the companies or the editors would still have some control. But things are changing when it comes to internet and digital world. Now, now evolution continued. The world started to change towards digitalized content. These days we are seeing rise in streaming services like we can see that we can see all kinds of content, the streaming content, whether it's news. If I want to watch Al Jazeera, I can watch it online. I don't have to just go out and buy some cable subscription. I can download their app. I can watch it. Or similarly, there are other. Sometimes they need subscription, but it's all in streaming service. You can watch it from your mobile as well. And importantly, what has changed from traditional media? That there's, uh, there's instant feedback. In traditional, traditional medium, for example, newspaper, the audiences would write to the editors. They would tell them about their feelings, the, their feedbacks. Now it's social media. You post something online, people can comment, people can come, there can be trend, there can be hashtags. This is how it's going. It's instant feedback. It's a change. It was there. It was not there before. Instant feedback is something completely new when it comes to this digital, when we talk about the internet and digital world, it has changed everything. And obviously that's why uh, when people are surfing through web and online uh, content, uh, it's, it's a different ball game. Obviously, most of the contents or the news are also shaped for the for the users because people can read what the audience want and the editors can read what the audiences want. Similarly, modern digitalization has taken place through social media sites. People are expressing themselves. People have become bloggers. People are sharing their stories. It has become a different world. It has changed the way we look at things. And particularly in pandemic, we can see that many people have now used technology. Some are using it for, for recording their blogs. Some are using for recording their lectures. New avenues, new concepts are coming in. So digital world, despite, it's a big example because despite uh, the pandemic hitting the world, the world people were asked to, to create social distance and the social distancing was emphasized. Despite that, people were connected. This is a remarkable achievement when it comes to digital world. But then we talk about speedy journalism and ethical consequences because where there's speed, 
there is we are bound to make errors the the fast the fast speed can cause problems instant breaking news unverified news unchecked news can have serious ethical consequences so we should also look into that aspect as well and uh, obviously uh, we talked about streaming services but i mentioned it again that youtube netflix amazon they're also changing the way we look at the content the use of content it was not there before the choice of user was not there what was broadcasted by television channel you were bound to watch it but now everyone watch their specific shows specific series what they want to see this has changed this is how audience have changed so my point is that with mediums everything changes even the audience changes their behavior changes and that's the strong impact of medium medium is the key so if medium is evolving it will definitely have an impact on you our lives and mass culture in general so before we wind up our session uh, this is going pretty well so we talk about speed versus accuracy so the faster the speed uh, it brings out some ethical considerations breaking news cultures can often have inaccuracies it can cause problems so we have to look into that because there's little time for gatekeeping there's little time for self censorship and that can be problematic then we the instant feedbacks there but how strongly we take that that also depends because sometimes audiences can also come up with a preconceived notions and can give negative feedback which can also affect the way uh, coverage is done because journalist fan following and how it affects how he writes or cover his story also depends on instant feedback and many journalists these days instead of writing balanced news or giving a fair opinion do they look at the the opinions of their audiences what kind of uh, opinions they are holding and that's how they alter their opinions as well which is something that we can look into future as well it's the serious ethical consideration that we have to consider so 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 some key points that we have to think about today's session is that mass culture depends on the medium medium is essentially important then evolution of media has huge impact on journalism so the if the medium is changing it will change the way journalism is being done uh, how it's covered how the story angles are done everything depends on the medium and then audience behavior also depends on the medium if the medium is changing if the thinking pattern changes how people respond and um, instant feedback is one of the classic examples that we can give here and then evolution is a continuous process and we will witness changes with time it's important to always remember that the the coming evolution will always take place there's there will be no stagnancy we must always be prepared for a change that's coming our way so some of the questions towards the end before we end our session how has journalism changed over the years what changes have you seen in mass culture do you think medium has an impact after all this discussion you can think about these questions these are some of the references that we have used i hope you enjoyed the session today it was a pretty detailed one we'll talk about it in our next session as well so hopefully stay in touch have a good day thank you very much